there are some things that we've noticed that, of course, could be better. Han Meditation. Hey guys, as you can see, I have all these journals. The link will be in the description. So go ahead and check this out. And it'll be in Amazon. Go ahead and get the book if you want to support the channel. Thank you guys for watching. Hey guys, I'm Han and this is Kelly. We are Han Meditations. We're so happy to be with you guys here. We got another special video for you. Let's get right into it. Shalom Aleichem, my brothers and sisters. Uh, today I want to discuss of what do Jews think of Muslims. Now, obviously I cannot really speak for all the Jews, but I can, you know, speak for myself. And I just would like to say that, you know, I really respect the monotheism of Muslims. You know, the fact that they worship one God, the fact that they don't tolerate any, you know, any sort of partnership to God, any sort of phys physicality or plurality to God. So this is something I think that's, you know, exactly in line with, you know, the teachings of the Torah. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, even though Jews and Muslims, I would say, are very similar in religion-wise, um, in, you know, in regards to the laws that we have. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, I think the situation, the political situation in Israel and, you know, the Palestinians has created, you know, like some sort of hate between Jews and Muslims. And that's really unfortunate. And I think there's probably going to come a time when this is going to pass, you know. Um, uh, you know, so so this is one thing. Now, another thing I would like to say is that I think is as Jews we have certain things that we should, in fact, learn from Muslims. You know, and as as hard as it, it is to admit, but certain things I think the Muslims are doing it more correctly than we as Jews do. And I'll give you several examples. Um, so, for example, the names. You know. All the Muslims or the Arabs uh, that I know, they have their names, you know, r which really I believe are Jewish names, like, or at least the names from the Torah, from the, you know, so the names, for example, like Ibrahim, or the names like Yaakov. And what I noticed is that Muslims, they pronounce the names, you know, their children. I don't see them corrupting the names. I mean, Ibrahim is Ibrahim, you know, Yaakov is Yaakov. Whereas in in with Jews, there's unfortunately I notice corruption. For example, Abraham for some reason becomes an Avi, or um, uh, Yosef. You know, Yosef is a beautiful name. Yosef for some reason becomes Yossi or Yos or Sefi, and um, you know the name Abraham. It has a meaning. Abraham means the father of nations. Av means father, Raham from the word Hamon, the father of multitude of nations, somebody who's respected by many nations. So I don't see a reason why as Jews sometimes we corrupt the names to make it shorter or whatnot. I'm not sure we call him Avi instead of Abraham. So I think this is something we as Jews should not be doing. And I think, uh, you know, the Muslims are a good example for us. I mean, we should, uh, you know, learn from them in this. You know, just because we have, I, I think it's maybe part of the, part of the, what's called like the exile mentality that unfortunately we still have. You know, as Jews, we've been exiled for 2000 years. We've been persecuted, you know, scattered throughout the nations. And maybe some, somehow we got the tendency to try to hide, you know, the authenticity of our names. Like Abraham, maybe a Jew is embarrassed to say it, you know, in public or call his children Abraham. So they started changing the names and whatnot and I think this is part of the exile mentality but now we've been back to our land you know it's already been what 60 years a little bit more and I think this is time for us to you know to return to the authenticity of Judaism meaning you know we're established it's time for us to establish our own culture and you know the way it's meant to be from the Torah and without, uh, you know, without trying to hide things. And I think this is, um, you know, one thing that we should learn from Muslims are the names. Another thing, I think, which is an important thing that as Jews we should learn from Muslims is this, is that 
when they read the Quran, I don't know if any of you heard of this, but heard them read the Quran, but when they read the Quran, they take their time. They read it slowly, clearly, pronouncing every syllable and every letter. Where in Judaism, unfortunately, you go to the synagogue on Saturdays and, you know, we read the whole parsha, and unfortunately, usually, I'm not saying it's always the case, but usually the guy who's reading the Torah, he reads it really fast. He reads it, you know, fast that sometimes it's, you can't really follow even exactly. And I think this is another thing that we as Jews must learn from Muslims. When we read the Torah, Torah is a holy, holy word of God. Every letter, every syllable came directly from God. And therefore, when we read the Torah, we should be reading it carefully, slowly, pronouncing each letter. And now, why exactly are we doing this? I'm not sure. Maybe I'm thinking maybe because since on Saturday mornings during the prayer, we have to read the whole parsha, the whole portion of the Torah, which could take, you know, several pages, maybe 10 pages, I'm not sure, depending on the... So, so maybe since we have to read the whole portion and, you know, obviously we don't eat before we pray and you know people are hungry and the prayer already takes like two hours on on this on saturday so maybe that's the reason why you know if we would be reading every word we would be spending like five hours during the pra prayer on saturday hungry maybe that's the reason why but if that's the case at least on mondays and thursdays when we also read the torah and we read not not a big portion of it you know just maybe 10 psukim or so at least at that time we should be I think, you know, taking it more carefully and, um, you know, reading it more carefully and taking our time. Um, another thing I think we as Jews must learn from Muslims, especially our Jewish sisters, is the modesty. You know, uh, if you notice among Muslim women, the way they cover their hair, you know, they cover their hair, their cheeks, their neck pretty much. Some of them even cover their faces. And I think uh, Jewish um, sisters have a lot to learn from this and they should you know, adopt the, uh, you know, the hijab. And in fact, some Jews do that. So, um, so I'm not saying that all Jews you know, do not do that, but there are some Jews, I think Left Tahor is a, is a group. But uh, anyways, I think that when it comes, you know, even though Jews and Mo Muslims became sort of, a, of an enemies, you know, when it comes to Israel and Palestine, that does not mean that we should be dishonest. You know, I think we should be honest and certain things that are done correctly, you know, among others, I think we should learn from and um, we should adapt. And hopefully, you know, because as Jews, what did the prophet Isaiah say? That we are supposed to be a light unto the nations. You know, the nations are supposed to learn from us when it comes to monotheism, when it comes to the law of the Torah. So hopefully, and I'm not saying we didn't do that. I think we did do that. You know, I think all the monotheistic religions somehow emerged from the fact that there were Jews among them that lived among them. So... Um, but, you know, I think if we do Judaism the correct way, the authentic, the authentic way, I think we would be more successful in uh, bringing light to the whole world. Thank you for watching. So I think he had some, uh, I think he was being as honest as he could be. The only part that I was like, kind of like, what, what are you talking about? Was whenever he said, uh, we're back in our lands, assuming he's talking about Israel. So I don't really understand how, I mean, I'm, I don't know, I'm ignorant, honestly, but I don't know how he could say this is our lands, if that is indeed what he was talking about. And I also don't know why, especially because a lot of the Jewish people that I see are, are white. And I'm not a guy that's like hyper focused on race or anything. I believe we're all just human beings. But I actually just wonder why is that? Because, you know, it's a Semitic religion that's in the Midwest. And I mean, not the Midwest, the Middle East. We live in the Midwest. <laughs> My head's, you know, it's been a long day. But it's in the Middle East. So I wonder, I think it's because a lot of Jewish people travel to different places. So they be, they took on the heritage of other people. 
Mm-hmm. I don't really know the history. Maybe we'll need to watch a, a, a video on it, but I don't mean any disrespect when I say it. I'm actually just wondering. But, you know, I think he was being very fair with what he said, and especially how he even said that women should take on the hijab and stuff. I think it was very interesting that he would uh, give credit to that because Muslims are definitely the most modest of religions, and it is a beautiful thing to see. Yeah, for sure. I was a bit confused about that aspect as well, but overall, I think the guy is pretty open-minded. And also, I guess I noticed... I guess this video was posted seven years ago, mm-hmm. but I think it's really good when we can, you know, just look at other religions, other beliefs and not necessarily look at it to convert or anything, but just look at, hey, little pieces of this are we could do better. I could do better. And I mean, that's really how we got started with this journey of even looking into Islam, because, you know, we we're both born Christians and there are some things that we've noticed that, of course, could be better. Of course, maybe we didn't agree with. So we are very open to looking at other things to see what could be better, what can be improved, even in your own personal life. So I think that's really beautiful that we don't just automatically shut out people who have different beliefs than us. We always can learn something from each other. And when we look at it with that non judgmental eye, it's very beneficial. And I, he did have some very, very nice points. And I agree, too, that the way that Muslim women take modesty is, is very, very respectful. And I definitely respect that as well, because, you know, at the end of the day, if we don't want people to look at our look at us as a body, as a physical being, we want them to see us as something deeper. We shouldn't put our bodies on display as the first things that they will notice, you know. Yeah, for sure. So, good point. Yeah. And uh, even to further clarify, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being white. Obviously, I'm married to a white woman. But (laughs) I don't think there's anything wrong with it. But my point is that if if indeed he was talking about, you know, Israel and Palestine saying these are our lands and you're clearly so far removed from it as a heritage wise, Mm. wise, but you're still saying my lands, they say like, let's say I'm 10 percent. Scandinavian and I'm saying which I you know I'm more like 14 or something percent Scandinavian and I'm like these are my lands over here in Scandinavia people are like what are you talking about that's so true. that's just where you know the if someone can enlighten me on that I would you know definitely would like to listen to that so thank you guys so much for watching the video thank you for subscribing and thank you for donating even one dollar two dollars whatever we are see it and it means more than you'll ever know thank you guys for being here and we'll see, see you, you in, in the, the next, next video, video.